Sharks Hockey on Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Satisfy your late night cravings with Jack's Munchy Meal. Available after 9 p.m. at participating restaurants. By Toyota. Do the math and save at your local Toyota dealer. And by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. Welcome back to SAP Center. Antti Niemi gets the start in goal for the San Jose Sharks. He's 8-6-2 and two in his career against the Canucks with one shutout. And on to the other end, the veteran Roberto Luongo. He has 64 career shutouts, but yes. he has never shut out the San Jose Sharks. So he's officially jinxed now for doing that tonight. Are you sure? A record of 8-4-2 for Luongo. You know, if the Sharks don't score tonight, you know you're getting the blame. Todd McClellan trying to get his team back on the winning track. They've dropped three straight. While the Vancouver Canucks have won five of their last seven, and John Tortorella, their new coach to start this year, seems to have everybody on board, Drew. Well, there was a color commentator earlier in the year, Randy, when uh, the Vancouver Canucks played the San Jose Sharks that said, just wait, John Tortorella will get this team playing the way he wants it to, and it won't take it very much time. That color commentator was absolutely correct. That was a pretty smart man, and I have a feeling he's in this booth. <laughs> We're underway here in the first period as Mark Edward Vlasic moves it across to his defense partner Justin Braun. The Sharks actually got the first goal of the game the other night. And they get a chance here as Couture puts it on target. Now a shot from the left point. And it goes wide past Luongo. That early goal for the Sharks from Martin Havlat. 8.48 into that first period against Buffalo. But after that, the wheels came off for the Sharks as they gave up three unanswered goals. Were able to battle back twice, but then lost it in the shootout after the controversial non-goal that looked like a good goal from Tommy Wingles in overtime. So the Sharks trying to do what they've done to the Canucks already twice this year, and that beat them. They beat them both times by identical 4-1 scores. Here's Alex Burrows for Vancouver. He'll scamper to center, send it into the San Jose zone. Canucks on an all-Pacific Division road trip that started with a shootout loss on Tuesday in Phoenix as Thornton comes to center. Cuts across the line. Rookie against Tanev. Banks it off the back boards. Hurdle there. They score! Luongo, I believe, knocked it into his own net. Joe Thornton. Home heist. Home ice advantage. That is about as freaky as they're going to come. That will make every highlight reel there is to make. Wow. I don't think I've seen a stranger goal in this building than that one. Joe Thornton dumped it in. Watch this bounce. Pop off the net, off the crossbar, off the shoulder. That is the weirdest goal I've ever seen. Has can you think of one like, like that? Looks like the Nike commercial. Off the building, off, off the freeway, off the car, and into the net. Wow. Tomorrow, everybody be trying that at practice. I bet you $1,000 you can't do that again. What a weird goal. Second of the season for Joe Thornton. And another one that bounces off the glove of Luongo this time. And we'll see how unsettled the Canucks are, and especially the man wearing number one, Roberto Luongo, after that crazy bounce goes in for Thornton's second of the year. Hurdle and Wingles get the assist, and those were nice assists by Hurdle and Wingles on that goal at a minute 17. It really set him up there. You can see that one developing all the way up the ice. Well, we're going to put that on three screws right now. That's just oh, Big hit That's by camera. Mike Brown. And now the Canucks try to get it out to center, and they do. As Brown out there to bring some energy to the Sharks' fourth line tonight. But the first line brings the first goal. And Todd McClellan making that change with Wingles playing on the right wing. He had Kennedy there on Tuesday night in the game against the Buffalo Sabres. Here's Martin Hadlap, who scored the other night against Buffalo. The goal that gave the Sharks the early lead on this line with Couture and Marlowe. And the Canucks get it out to center. Kessler dumps it in and takes a shot from Brad Stewart. Niemi up the boards for Stewart, but it's intercepted. Kessler puts one through the crease. Alex Edler jumps in, makes contact with Havlat. He plays it behind the net, hoping to work it to a defenseman. 
It was stolen by Vancouver, but now Marlowe will get it across the ice for Couture, and he'll swing it in. One nothing Sharks on the goal by Thornton. Bouncing to center, Jason Demers settling it under pressure from Mike Santarelli. Santarelli now up to the second line for the Canucks, and he's had a terrific year for them. In fact, he's played so well for Vancouver that it's allowed them to move Kessler out of the center position, put him up with the Sedins, and create a super line. Tanev has to hurry. Wingles with some speed right on him. And Tanev works it back over to Edler. Turned over. Wingles to Pavelski. Takes a shot. Block. Hurdle over. Skates it. And the Sharks just about had themselves a great chance there. Niemi. Omni playing it over to Justin Braun. And a much, much crisper look to the Sharks in this first period than we saw the other night. I'm just thinking the same thing. The support right now. The Sharks really moving well off the puck. Quick, short little passes. The Masters of the five-foot pass right now, and that makes you, you a quicker team. Dan Hamuse works it up the right wing side as the Canucks try and get something going here down early. Play to the front of the net, and they score! Brad Richardson left all alone, and the Canucks tie it up. Big pinch by the Vancouver Canucks. Bring the pressure right down. The San Jose Sharks are too far ahead of the L of the Vancouver Canucks. I was going to say LA Kings because of Brad Richardson, but Brad Richardson stays behind as the Sharks start to move out of the zone. Very good pinch, very good read by the Canucks, and bang, they're back in the game. 1-1. One, one. Well, they never really out of the game. 1-1, one, one, though, that's a very important goal to get because it gets you back settled down after what you figure was a pretty bad break for the Vancouver Canucks. So Richardson becomes only the third Canuck this season to score against Antiniemi in these matchups. Garrison and Santorelli had the only other goals in the back-to-back 4-1 -back losses as Daniel Sedin's shot is blocked. Now Kessler move out from behind the net. Nice stop move, shakes off Stewart, looking to center it. Kessler still with the puck. Overlaps with the exit, now using the referee kind of as a pickback there as the Canucks keep it moving. Daniel Sedin to the net for Kessler, cleared out by Boyle to center ice. Two picks, one there by the referee and also one by Kevin Bieksa. This is where Vancouver has really improved, below the hash marks. You see the Sharks forward lines and defense pairs revealing at the top of your screen. As we mentioned, Wingles playing on Thornton's line tonight, and Kennedy moves on to the Joe Pavelski line. Everything in status quo on the blue line. Puck in the crease, and the net comes off as Luongo is down on the ice. Vancouver line is going to pop up on your screen right now, and Sedin, Sedin, Kessler. The reason Kessler's up on that line as a right winger is because of the play of my view set, Randy. Mike Santorelli, who has played very, very well. But that second line on the wings, they need to get better. Archibald Richardson, Cassian, some big boys. Cassian back in the lineup. We didn't see him because of his suspension earlier in the year. Edler and Garrison are the big shooters for the Vancouver Canucks on the point. Danny Hamu's game has settled down earlier in the year. He was just all over the place. He settled down and... The Sharks' favorite guy to dislike, Kevin Bx. Off the draw, a slap shot from the blue line by Hannon. And now Garrison chasing back into his own end, works it up for Alex Burrows. 1-1 the score, goals by Thornton and Richardson. Thornton's one of the craziest bounces you'll ever see. Hurdle at his own blue line, and a little bit of trouble for the Sharks, but now Hannon, his pass for Thornton gets away from Joe Edler. Turns it over along the boards to Hurdle. Back for Thornton. Joe rims it along to the point for Demers. Now Hannon has a look using the boards again. Didn't have the angle this time, though, as it comes back to the Canucks. Demers able to cause enough trouble there where the Canucks couldn't clear it out, but now Garrison will have time, too. Only one shot on goal for Vancouver, and it went in. Sharks have two. And we're already almost six and a half minutes into the game. Braun. And Vlasic up to center. Kennedy will get it in. Those are the dump-ins you want to avoid. You want to avoid where we're going to and get out there. Chance here in front, but Pavelski lost the handle. Hamu swings it back over to Tana. Cassian can't pick it up on the boards. And it's brought right back in again from center for the Sharks. 
Zach Cassian up ice for Darren Archibald up from the American Hockey League, Vancouver's franchise this year in Utica, New York. So he had a bit of a journey to get caught up to the team as the Canucks are going through a little bit of injury problems right now. Yana Hansen, Dale Weiss, and David Booth all out, although Booth is skating again. They sent him to Utica for a conditioning stint where he'll play two or three games in succession. We've got an offside call. A strange goal to start this one. Joe Thornton, though, he'll take it. For Alexis keys to the game for Tom McCullen's team details and that's a big umbrella but it's puck movement it's choosing the right man it's putting the proper puck in the, the puck in the proper position all kinds of things go into details in details comes execution get those passes tape to tape make sure you're driving the net when you're doing it at the right time all those things that walk, battle into execution last but not least against the Vancouver Canucks you got to be able to battle you got to be able to get down low you got to be able to go to work and grind out a win Pavelski all the way around the net to Matt Nieto he tried to return the favor Pavelski unable to pick it up now a battle on the boards and the Canucks will move it out Cassian first time the Sharks have seen him as you mentioned he was suspended when these teams met back in October twice here's Richardson out to Edler at the point he'll let one rip and it's off the glove of Miami Deflected off Kennedy up high, too. Now Nieto back for Kennedy. Pavelski pulls the trigger, and he just missed wide. He bobbled a little bit when he received it, kind of threw the shot off, but he had a good drive to the net as well on that right leg. Guy got the puck. Now Cassian hands it off for Stanton. Good poke check there by Braun to break it up. In comes Havlat, slowed down by Cassian. Works it deep for Marlowe. Then his pass for Couture intercepted. Ryan Stanton sends it back to center ice, but Marlowe's on it again for the Sharks. And Patrick Marlowe risks it in hard. Marlowe, eight goals, one behind Tomas Hurdle for the team lead in goal scoring. Marlowe with 15 points, two better than Hurdle overall. Now a backhander saved by Niemi as Braun picks it back up once. Adelaide coming through the middle, led him too far with the pass. This will be icing. I want you to have a look at Patrick Marlowe. When we talk about details, just hold on. There's Patrick Marlowe. When we talk about details, roll. This is a detail. Now he's coming over. Now he's okay. He's locked on that man. That's his guy. Look how he stops skating. He stops skating and allows Kevin Bieksa to get in and get the opportunity on net. That's a detail. You've got to make sure you once you lock on the man, he's yours, and you keep him out of commission. Dan Hamuse jumps in to keep things alive. Hamuse got a goal the other night in Phoenix. Canucks ended up losing that game 3-2 in a shootout. Third goal of the year for Hamuse. He had only four last season in the shortened campaign. In fact, he scored in two straight games for John Tortorella. Comes out of that pack along the boards to Braun. He'll flip it up through center looking for Marlowe, and that almost worked. Had Tana made, not made that nice play, Marlowe would have been home free. And Vancouver scores, and it's Mike Santarelli, and the Canucks have taken the lead. Quick transition by the, by the Vancouver Canucks. A little smile from John Tortorella. Smart play. Just a little soft pop to the man driving the net. A double drive to the net, then just quickly shoot it on the net. And how does Mike Santarelli get so wide open? And again, details missing from the Sharks game. When you come on the, the ice on a line change, you've got to be able to identify and get your feet moving, get back in position. So we mentioned the Sharks had given up only one goal in each of the prior two games. That's two now here in this first period. And the Canucks are on top and out shooting the Sharks by two. And here comes the top line for Vancouver. Kessler on with Henrik and Daniel Sedin. Daniel out front, no one there, but Edler will put it right back to the net, and the Emmy will catch and hold. Just keep it frozen for a sec, guys, right off the bat, because we're just going to show you over here. It's, a, it's, it's not a good line change by the Sharks. Go. So, puck doesn't get deep enough. Not a good time for a line change. Real good quick up by the Vancouver Canucks. And then two guys drive the net. The forwards can't get out on time to get a hold of Santorelli. And, a, and Jason Demers plays it. 
not badly, but you really can't chase over when it's a two-on-one. He wasn't realizing it was a two-on-one. No communication, poor line change, and the San Jose Sharks are down by one. Details again. Right off the draw, a slap shot to Tool Niemi as it again may have been deflected. Coming off that board, hot and hard, and now Cannon up for Hurdle on to Wingles. Sharks trailing here in the first period against the Canucks. Wingles ties up with Edler. Thornton's there, but so is Daniel Sedin. He'll protect it along the boards. Now it's out to Brad Stewart. Demers takes a shot, a double deflection. That almost went in. And Kessler comes back the other way for the Canucks with Edler. And that pass just jumped over his stick, puts it wide of the net. Thornton bangs it out to center, but right back to Kevin Bieksa. That last goal, Sandorelli, his fifth from Higgins and Burroughs at 9.25. Burroughs playing in just his sixth game this year, coming off injury, picks up his first point of the season. Now Shepard. The Sharks tie it right back up as Mike Brown beats Luongo and it's a wide open goal fest here in the first half of the first period. What a nice play by Mike Brown. Just pop the puck, let James Shepard skate for it. James Shepard, good burst to speed, terrific feed, heavy stick by Mike Brown. And boom, the Sharks are right back in a tie with the Vancouver Canucks. Again. A drive to the middle, letting the guy skate into it. James Shepard, what an effort. Back in the lineup. He learned his lesson, whatever lesson the coaching staff wanted to send. And a goal from Mike Brown, his first in 36 games, is certainly a bonus for the San Jose Sharks. And, of course, his first as a San Jose Shark, coming over in the trade from the Edmonton Oilers. So Brown gets a big goal for Tom McClellan's fourth line. And the Sharks tie it back up here. 2-2, and we're just over halfway through this first period. Richardson again for Vancouver. Now Brown back on it again. Dujardin across center. Throws it at the net, looking for a line change, and Luongo will freeze it there. Dujardin now going into it with Stanton. After that shower that Luongo got, and Stanton throwing the punches against Dujardin. Wow, he kind of jumped him there, didn't he? Jardin gave a little shower to Luongo, and the Canucks didn't like it. Mike Brown ties it. Of course, we'll have penalties. We'll get to it all when we come back. So we got some guys in the box now. The first fisticuff of the evening. Andrew Desjardins throws the puck in. He's going to skate after, wait for the whistle. Go play to the whistle. Oh, that's not even a spray shower for crying out loud. Wow, is there going to be an instigator here? Because Stan, to me, looks like he instigates that penalty. Nope. Wow. Five each for fighting. Was there a spray there, really? He didn't spray him at all? No, there wasn't. It was like a, that was like a... He was stopping. You have to stop. That was like a light Vancouver rain shower. Oh, that's a... And then there's no, there's no penalty for us to get it. Come on, boys. Mike Brown, first goal is the San Jose Shark. As you mentioned, first goal going back 35 games, March 10th of 2013, last season, when he was a member of the Edmonton Oilers. Here's the, here's the question I have. Did Andrew Desjardins intend to stop earlier? <laughs> We'll have to check that. Maybe we'll check that with the ruling. Somebody uh, tweeted me today. They intended to buy a lottery ticket yesterday. Could they collect the jackpot, please, even though they didn't? Yeah. Wouldn't it be a great way to live life? Although there is that, there is that old saying, the road to hell, it's paved with good intentions. <laughs> We've got a 2-2 game here. We've got five-minute fighting penalties each to Desjardins and Stanton. So we're still five on five here in this very entertaining opening period so far. We've seen a little bit of everything already. Hannon flips that one up onto the Canuck bench and play is John, halted. John Tortorella is yelling at one of the officials right now. Support the military with a Military Appreciation Night ticket package. It includes a discounted ticket to the Sharks against Tampa Bay here on November 21st and an exclusive commemorative Military Night t-shirt. You'll be supporting the military as a portion of proceeds benefit Operation Care and Comfort Plus. The packages start at just $41 only online at sjsharks.com slash themenights. 
The theme in this first period, goals, four of them. And not very many shots. Only a total of 10. So the shooting percentage is high. The safe percentage, not so high. Canucks back with it again. Here's Daniel Sedin. He'll send it back around for brother Henrik. Henrik. Back along the boards, wanted Kessler, Couture there, he can't get it out. He'll get another chance here, but there's two Canucks on him. Now Daniel, down in the corner, he's rubbed out by Braun. Henrik gets it back. He'll give it to Daniel, wanted Kessler in front, a little too far. Edler drops it back for Kessler. No wrist it around. Daniel can't catch it, Couture can't clear it again. Garrison sends it back down to Daniel. Braun back on him. Now the Sharks will come up this side of the ice and try and get out of their end. And they will, and they've got a two-on-one. Couture's with Marlowe. Logan Couture skates in, and the pass broken up by Garrison. I think Couture was just out of gas there. Yes, he didn't have much of an effort, or much, I'm sorry, much of a, a chance to make a play on that. He spent a long time in his own end yeah. defending. Here's Brown now, the last goal scorer to Shepard. Shepard, a nice move across the line. Shepard can't get the shot away. Brad Stewart mishandles the puck, but we've got a Canuck penalty. And as they possess the puck, the whistle's blown, hooking the call. Sharks will have their first power play. <laughs> John, not a happy guy with the referees. This is the penalty getting called right there. Co Brad Richardson reaches in. Can't stick parallel to the ice. John Tortorella does not like that call. And the Sharks get on the power play. This is going to be where this game may hinge. On the Bay Alarm penalty box, we see the two Vancouver Canucks standing for the fight. Richards for the hook. And the Sharks are on a Cash Creek power play. Their power play ranked 11th at 20%, but they are going up against the number two penalty kill in the NHL. There's a, there's a great stare down going between the head coach of the Vancouver Canucks and the officials on the ice. Off the draw, Marlowe. The one-timer and a stick save by Luongo. Back to the net. Couture a shot. Block. Couture a shot. Block. Another shot. Wide by Boyle. Couture a shot. Saved or tipped. And Logan Couture firing at will here against the Canuck net. They finally clear it down. Constant dropping. Where's the stone? You might as well keep throwing the puck at the net. Shooting is the best option. The Vancouver Canucks, though, another aspect of a John Tortorella coach team, shot blockers. Now, now sure gets it back to Dan Boyle. On to Pavelski. He'll load up, give it off the boards to Marlow, whose backhand centering pass is intercepted and cleared. Changes by both sides. Power play unit number two comes on for the Sharks as Pavelski... We'll hand it off. Tomasz Hurdle does a pirouette in his own zone. Now hands it to Jason Demers, and they'll come up ice. Wingles and his pass. Well, it wasn't one. And the Sharks can't get out of the neutral zone right now. Demers will. Gives it to Havlak. Martin Havlak moves down the board. Now the pass for Demers, and he'll swing it to Hurdle. Nobody to go to yet at the left point. Hurdle steps on a stick. He falls. Daniel Sedin comes back up to center. Havlat gives it to Braun. Hook checked away from him. Nice Santorelli. Terrific job by Vancouver in the neutral zone. Sometimes you just got to dump the puck in and go chase it. And that's cleared all the way down. Skips to Miami. And there's just 15 seconds left on the power play. All the good chances came early from Couture. Wow, that's where Brent Burns is really missing. Brent comes out in that B unit, and he is able to change the way the power play looks and becomes a threat every time he's got a chance to shoot the puck. Richardson's out. Power play over. Sharks still possess it. Couture. Pass for Thornton. And Joe left it in the corner. Tanev will bank it around to Hamuse. And the Canucks trying to get it cleared here. Can't. Hannah to the net. Had Thornton there, but it was blocked by Tanev. Chris Higgins, Thornton trying to get it off him with help from Marlowe. They do, Couture can't control it, however. And the Canucks clear through center and beyond. Santorelli trying to get to the puck, but a good recovery by Vlasic. Now Richardson to the net, Cassian was there, but it was off the ice. Quickly, back the other way come the Sharks. Matt Nieto for Pavelski. 
Pavelski leaned on by Alex Edler. Here's Cassian turning and banking it ahead. Good flow to this game. Garrison loads up, saved by Niemi. Boyle quickly off the board. Now Dan Boyle skates away from Cassian, plays it up ice, and it gets by Pavelski back to the Vancouver zone. 340 left here in the first. 2 2 the score. Goals by Thornton and Brown for the Sharks. Here's Archibald for Vancouver. Their goals from Richardson and Santarelli. As Kennedy tries to move it past the Vancouver line of defense along the boards and does, but the XO with plenty of time. Kevin Bieksa looking for his first goal of the season. He had six last year in the shortened year. None yet this campaign. Jeremy Welsh, number 13. Another call up from the American League. Working hard with James Shepard possessing the puck. And now Vlasic will get it away to Marlowe. That's Marlowe up ice. Sorry, that was a shrink. You want to talk about shrinking the defensive zone. What an excellent job by the Sharks there. Brown. And it's on Bieksa's stick as the Sharks will change on the fly. Two and a half left here in the first. Henry for Kessler. A man at his right and the slap shot comes in from Daniel Sedin. Antti Niemi will hold it for a faceoff. We'll be back at SAP Center. shots but the Bruins Flyers Rangers and Bruins were able to do that correct me if I'm wrong the Bruins and the Flyers on the top of those uh, two lists those two years they won the Stanley Cup those years didn't they? I believe you are correct sir you can't correct me if I'm wrong no, I'm sure somebody will via the Twittersphere out there oh Thank wait you. I don't get Twitter <laughs> in so many ways Braun behind the San Jose net 2-2 game here over two minutes to play in this first period. Marlowe drops it for Logan Couture. Now Patrick to this side of the ice. Locked up in a battle with Daniel Sedin. Puck played by Hamlat. Now trouble for Vlasic as Daniel comes across the line to Henrik. Good stick there by Braun. Reached it out. Got the puck away from Henrik. Now he'll battle him out of the corner. To Marlowe. Possible three on two. Marlowe's pass to Hamlat. Kicks it off his skate. Shot blocked by Edler. And now Henrik will turn back. He's the Canucks' leading scorer. Only three goals, but 17 assists. Henrik also, as you could call him, the hottest player, at least the most consistent offensive player in the league right now. He's got a 12-game point streak. That's the longest in the NHL. Luongo leaves his position at the side. Chance for Hurdle and his shot blocked. There's a little hesitation. Here's a giveaway by Demers. Burrows to the net. They score. 3-2 Vancouver. Chris Higgins puts it up top. Wow, this is just plain ugly. Like Jason Demers doesn't need it's a it's a terrible pass number one and then he goes for the hit here takes out Scott Hannon leaves Chris Higgins wide open just chips it over Antti Niemi this is just a bad play all around smart play by Burroughs he knows he's going to get hit so he just touches it back he knows Higgins support is there there's an old saying with coaches you can make one mistake in your own zone just don't compound it by making another one Jason Demers two mistakes there and the Sharks are down again Higgins sixth of the year at 1855. So a three goal first period for Vancouver. After not scoring more than two in two entire games against the Sharks. It's a nice little chip by Chris Higgins, too. Burroughs gets the only assist. That's his second point of the period. Burroughs knows he's going to get hit, so he just leaves the puck and Higgins just scoops in and lifts it over Antti Niemi. Not much of a chance for Niemi there. I just, again, details. You compound one thing, don't panic. Come back, pick up your man, 
organize. Vancouver has three goals on eight shots. Will we maybe see a goalie change? Tana back. This will be icing against the Sharks. Alex Stalock, of course, dressed as the backup netminder for the Sharks here tonight. He's appeared in one game this year. That was his first NHL start in Ottawa, and he was very good in a win. Brilliant. He was absolutely brilliant. And maybe Todd McClellan is thinking that his team could use a jolt, and his goaltender needs to be switched and maybe gets a rest. Camus to Kessler. Now the Sedin's working behind the net. Henrik comes out, pushed to the ice. Abroad, and now it's lifted clear to center with half a minute left to go in this five-goal first period. Vlasic taking his time. Well, the Sharks complete a line change. And it's played to Couture. Logan drives it out of the zone, but right to Hanus. Canucks will have to tag up here. And they do. Or they do not. The period comes to an end. So, a ragged start here for the Sharks trying to snap a three-game losing streak as they give up three in the first period. 3-2 Vancouver leads after one. Stick around. We'll check in with our Ahmed Fareed in the Sportsnet Central Studios. And then Brody Brazil will be back to talk to the Sharks goal scorer, Mike Brown. Sharks Hockey on Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Toyota. Do the math and save at your local Toyota dealer. Back at SAP Center in San Jose. Just about ready to start the second period with Vancouver up 3-2. Time for tonight's Geico quote. And it comes from that gentleman, the head coach of the Vancouver Canucks, John Tortorella, talking about his star players in general. And he says, quote, I couldn't imagine seeing what they see. What we were talking about this morning was the creativity factor of players and he says he tries to stay away from that he said coaches can help manufacture offense by talking about a four check or maybe some power play formations but he said when looking at what Daniel and Henrik see he said I couldn't imagine what they see that creativity that offensive flair has to come from them and he said he's never ever tried to to be in that process he's tried to stay out of it he said but the other thing that they do require though is that hardness in scoring and that's where a coach can come in he said he loves listening to the twins especially because he learns when the twins start talking about say what they see in the power play or in the offensive zone and the 55 year old head coach of the Canucks now in his 14th season behind a National Hockey League bench most recently with the New York Rangers and before that with Tampa Bay where he won a Stanley Cup with Dan Boyle. There's a former Shark player, Mike Sullivan. 171 games with the San Jose Sharks. And there was Ben Gulson, former head coach of the Dallas Stars. And Glenn, very instrumental in helping both Mike and John get used to that Western Conference, get them understanding what the Western Conference is all about because they'd spent their time in the East. Sully, Gully, and Torts. <laughs> Sounds like a band. <laughs> it does. Well, second period underway. Ryan Kessler takes a run at Justin Braun. You know, the Sharks come out here after, I'm sure, some pointed comments from the coaching staff after that first period of play. It's the details of the game, one of our, you know, our first Lexus key to the game. The Sharks have to get that detail back. Marlow across the rink. Wingle shot save. Big fat rebound. But the Canucks will control it. And it's Burroughs who had a two assist first period. Throws it to the net and it's caught by Niemi. A change for the San Jose Sharks. This works out for the change. Pass is going to come across. Go ahead and roll it, guys. Patty Marlowe jumps in. A little bit of motion. Kind of distracts the Vancouver Canucks. And the one shot on net. But nobody stays in front of net. Again, details. And really what details are, details are the foundation for your identity as a team. And the Sharks know their identity. Todd McClellan talks about it. They know how they have to play in order to be successful. And in that, the details have to be in the game so you do play to your identity. Sharks had only five individuals with shots on goal in that first period. As they battle behind the net here, Joe Thornton. 
got credit for a shot on goal because the puck went in even though he shot it off the end boards and it rolled up off the top of the netting and off the body of Roberto Luongo went in now Thornton out to Wingle Stewart pumps a shot and it's blocked in front that was Hamuse knocking it down and it helps feed the rush for Vancouver a block by Boyle and now the chase on is Brad Stewart works against Mike Santarelli. These teams will play in Vancouver a week tonight, and then, believe it or not, that's it for the season. The only other time they would possibly meet beyond next Thursday would be in the playoffs, which is a distinct possibility. At least in the early going here, these look like two playoff-bound teams in the Pacific slash West. Top three teams in the division will make it. That makes up six between the two Western Conference divisions. And then two wild cards with the best records after that will round out the top eight. Vancouver's on pace for a 107-point season right now. And we were talking today that they could end up seventh place for 107 points. It's going to be it's going to be wild, boy. That's why those wins that we talked about start with 30% of Curtis Brown with shootout wins. It's, it's important to get as many points as you can so you don't have to rely on tiebreakers or anything like that. Shepard working against Tom Sestito. One thing about Tortorella, he doesn't use his fourth line all that much. The enemy with a save, rebound cleared by Shepard up to Desjardin. And he sends it back in. Top players will get a lot of minutes under John Tortorella. That's for sure. You'll see plenty of the Sedins this year. And right now the second line of Higgins, Santarelli, and Burroughs are getting more than their share of ice time. Here's Kessler after Stewart was knocked down at the line by Sestito. Hannon getting back there. Dujardin sends it up the boards, but Daniel intercepts. Daniel Sedin for Henrik. Back for Daniel. Kessler parked in front. Sharks trying to move him out of there. Hannon doing the duty right now. A shot through the screen created by those two, and it's saved. Authentic Raiders fans turn to Comcast Sportsnet for in-depth coverage every day and online. Plus, the authentic post-game show of the team is Raiders post-game live. And the authentic home of the Raiders is Comcast Sportsnet. They'll try to bounce back from the Philadelphia loss, heading to New York this weekend to take on the Giants. A giant on the blue line over the years, Scott Hannon, originally drafted by the San Jose Sharks. You mentioned the other day, he has been Mr. Consistency. He's played so well. He's playing quicker. He's in better shape this year. He's plugging into the lineup yeah. every night. He's been a great stopper for Todd McClellan back there. Just really, just really smart how he plays the game, composed. Kennedy trying to get in on the pass from Marlowe, denied. And now Kessler comes out for Vancouver. 3-2, Canucks rolled by Richardson, Santarelli, and Higgins. There was a scoring change on the first Vancouver goal by Richardson. They added an assist to Archibald. Here's Marlowe, wrist shot, and Luongo the same. That's a nice entry into the zone, real simple. Straight ahead. Todd McClellan talked north-south hockey, talks about it all the time. This is a drive to the net through the middle. Pop it to the outside. You've got three guys driving towards the net. That shot. Up higher, obviously hit Roberto Luongo in the crest, but that's credit Roberto Luongo coming out, cutting down the angle, making himself big. Not much for Patrick Marlowe to shoot at. Luongo had 30 saves on Tuesday night in that shootout loss in Phoenix, so both the Sharks and Canucks have lost to Phoenix in a shootout in the past week. Sharks also went down to the Coyotes, also by the same 3-2 score, and also on a shootout deciding goal by Antoine Vermette. He beat both the Sharks and the Canucks in the shootout to win it. He is the decider. Thornton up to the blue line for Tommy Wingles. Wingles getting his first look on this line with Thornton and Tomas Hurdle tonight. Paid off on the first goal, all three combined with points on that goal that rolled off Luongo. Thornton against Burroughs, now Hurdle walks the goal line, brings it around, and his pass blocked. Uh, it's Tanev able to get his stick in there. As Hannon angles across and sends it to Demers. 
Now back up the boards for Tomas Hurdle. He's got a man open. It's Pavelski. Joe Pavelski a backhander, and he missed the net as Stanton went into the crease, and the goal post dislodges, and the whistle blows. I just want to show you, you know, we talk about support all the time. I had somebody ask me the other day, what support? Just hold on here. So the puck is going to get popped up right here. And so Joe Pavelski, this is support. He just comes across, and he makes himself available for a pass. Go ahead and roll it. It's coming back. It's going to pop up. Here comes Pavelski right across the ice, and that's support right there. You're just going to skate towards the puck carrier, being available, being an option for a pass. Well done by Joe Pavelski on the line, too. Over five minutes gone here in the second period. By this time in the first, it was already 1-1 as that puck goes through the crease, back out to the blue line, and they score! It's Kevin Bieksa with the shot, and it's 4-2. I think Zach Cassian might have touched that. I think so, too, the way he yeah. lifted his stick in front exactly. of the net. Yeah, the way he, he celebrated. I think it might have went off his skate. Shot block. Now goes off, I think, the left leg of Zach Cassian. Hard shot by Bieksa, certainly, yep, it, it jumps up there. You say the way that Zach Cassian reacts. And the Vancouver Canucks are up by a couple, and we are going to have the goaltending change that we thought might come. So Alex Stalock will come in. That's it for Auntie Niemi for now. And Vancouver has a 4-2 lead. San Jose Sharks on that particular defensive zone coverage were all over the place. Alex Daylock coming in. You see his numbers. This is a terrific game that he played in Ottawa, faced 40 shots, and he was absolutely brilliant. Sometimes you do this because your goaltender is just having a tough night. Sometimes you do this because you want to spark your team, give them a jolt, saying, I got to hook this guy because you guys aren't playing very well. As we look at Zach Cassian, I think this is a a little bit of each here for Todd McClellan. I don't think he's liked everything by his goaltender tonight, Monty Niemi, and I think he wants to give his team a little kick in the pants. Try to uh, get them to play for his goalie. This is as many goals as the Sharks gave up in three periods and an overtime against Buffalo here on Tuesday night. It's 4-2 Canucks. Cassian's goal, his third of the year at 522. We haven't had the official call on it yet. I think they're probably taking a closer look at that deflection in front of the Emmy. But we think it's Cassian. Now Couture. Kennedy comes out of the corner, tried to reach the point man, Hannon. It bounces across the goal mount. Stanton knocked out of the way by Kennedy, but he's able to recover. Shepard, given the business to Bieksa. Hannon in deep. Played up the board, Brown there, and he gets to the puck, runs into Kessler, but Kessler was able to clear it. Take a hit to make a play. Brown could do that because he saw Scott Hannon coming back, wasn't worried about maybe having a play where it was going to go a two-on-one. He was going to take either the puck or the body. What a good shift for the Sharks' third or fourth line here as they kept the puck in the Vancouver zone for the majority of their time on the ice. That you ask. You want them to build some momentum for your team, be physical, build momentum, get the crowd excited, get your team excited. And the Sharks could use some excitement and a little bit of jolt. Stewart for Desjardins. And Andrew Desjardins flips it up from center ice, but it's gloved down by Hemus. Now a little miscue as he tries to get it around to the fence. And then Brown came flying in on Hemus, and he just saw the train arrive in time. Dalpy, he'll tee one up, and Stalock, first shot faced with the save. 4-2, the Canucks lead here in the second period. <laughs> with the winning goal in overtime, as the Sharks took the 2-0 lead in the series. We go on to sweep it, and joining us live up here in the broadcast booth is the man who scored that goal, Rafi Torres. Rafi, great to see you. Look like you've been working out tonight. That's all he does. Absolutely. Uh, I've been coming in. Uh, game is just more or less uh, come in, get a good workout in, and uh, cheer on the guys. How are you doing? You were injured in the preseason in that game against Anaheim, surgery on the knee, and uh, I know you've been skating already, not in a practice setting, but how's it going? 
going great. Uh, the, the staff here, Mike Tanza, Ray, they, they're just doing a great job right now. And feeling pretty good. Every day is uh, getting better, a little better. So uh, I think we're ahead of schedule right now. And uh, as far as I as far as I know, it's uh, I'm, I'm I'm happy the way things are going. Thomas Hurdle trying to get hold of the puck down in the Vancouver zone. Rafi Torres with us, and he'll stay with us here for a bit during the second period. Santarelli for the Canucks. He lifts one high and out of play. Rafi, you've obviously had a chance to watch the team a little more than you'd like to. You'd rather be out there playing, but uh, what have your observations been uh, through the season so far for the team? I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a talented team. Obviously, run uh, great by uh, the coaching staff here. Uh, I think we're a good team. I think I think we can be better, though. I don't. I I've seen a lot of games where, you know, where things are going well, and then, you know, it's uh, it's just something that uh, I th I don't think we've played our best best uh, hockey yet. Uh, it's still uh, we still got uh, you know plenty of time to do that. So it's uh, something good to uh, look forward to. Blocked there by Vlasic as the Canucks got a good scoring chance, but Stalock stopped it. Now Marlow looking to pick it up on the near side boards. He does for Couture. He's checked by Daniel Sedin. Kessler gave it away. Kennedy fell. Now Couture out of the corner. A reverse pass for Kennedy. It pinballs around down near the goal line. And Bieksa is playing keep away. Lost it. Now up the boards. Kessler will flick it off the boards. Back down. And Vlasic sends it across. Rafi, have you ever been in a situation where you've been out this long before? Well, yeah, I tore my ACL uh, a few years back in 06, and 07, I think, I believe it was, with uh, Edmonton. And uh, we were 25 games in the season, so uh, that was pretty much a write-off for that year. But, you know, obviously, it's just part of being a professional athlete. You know, you got to go through these tough times, and, uh, you know, it's a matter of, uh, you know, staying focused and doing the things you got to do to better yourself every day and have a little patience, and uh, things uh, things will work out. You seem remarkably patient as, as far as that goes. Like I said, you've been working out every day. I see you every day. Um, so, have you? Is that had something you had to work on, or was just that you just uh, you just said I just gotta I just gotta. Well, relax. if you ask my wife, uh, she'll, she'll have something different to say. But you know what? I got I got a great uh, stable home at home. Uh, my, my wife and kids are keeping me busy, and I'm doing stuff that I uh, wouldn't be able to normally do with all this time off. So. Uh, that's been that's been helpful and just being around the guys uh you know it's a great locker room uh, like i said earlier and um, it's just uh, like i said it's just, just things they got to go through right yeah another save there for alex stalock what goes on with the team now you're down four two and and just in any particular game that you're playing what kind of things are happening in the dress room and on on the bench right now well it's a good test for us you know we're down by two like you said uh, against a good team uh, who, who, who are playing well. Yes. Uh, this will be a good test to see. Uh, you know, we obviously got to get more shots to the net. Uh, and th these are the games you're going to have to win down the stretch to start to get those two points. So, it's, uh, you know, there's still a lot of hockey left more than half the game. So, uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll be good to see what happens here. 18 to 8. The Sharks being outshot by the Canucks, but it's DeJardin to the net. A pass for Brown. He's checked hard by Sestito as Shepard goes into the boards against Welsh. The physicality picks up with the Sharks fourth line on the ice now and the Canucks with some of their big guys out there as well. We've got a penalty call coming up interference. It's going to be some more little push in shall it? Sestito would love to take somebody to the box with him but I don't think Brown's going to bite and the Sharks ought to end up with a power play here. You don't get injured Mike Brown's probably not on this team but he is on this team now. Tell me about Mike Brown. One of the most, uh, you know, toughest pound for pound guy in the league. Uh, this guy plays every shift like it's his last. This is the type of uh, guy that, uh, you know, you feed off uh, his emotion, you know. Having a great game tonight. I think this fourth line is really bringing it tonight. But, you know, hopefully uh, it'll rub off from some of the other guys. But he's, I think he's a great asset for our team. Jason Garrison gets the penalty call for interference at 9.23. So a chance for the Sharks to cut into this Vancouver lead here on the power play. San Jose 0 for 1 started the night ranked 11th on the power play in the league against this very good penalty killing team. You know where Jason Garrison is sitting right now, Randy? He is sitting in the bail arm penalty box, Drew. You're right. Absolutely correct. Dan Boyle. On the move. Couture. Trouble on the near boards. Got into the skates of linesman Brad Lazarowicz and the fans booing him. And they should. Do <laughs> you say anything when that happens? Do you say anything to the linesman? Nothing I can say on the air. <laughs> 
Oh, here we There's go. a nice dangle by Pavelski. Stick lift by Kessler gets the puck away. And it bounces back to the San Jose net. Couture. A little miscue there on that quick feed for Boyle. Now Hurdle. And he gives it to Kessler. Nice job up the ice by the Vancouver Canucks. And another good stick by the Canucks. Now Hurdle will skate free from Kessler and get it up ice to Boyle. Boyle across the line. Off his stick to the corner. Havlat there. In the corner against Edler. Puck up high. Batted down with the glove by Edler. Kept in by Braun. Horton stumbles and Bieksa clears it down. High pressure penalty kill. Less than half a minute left now on the man advantage here for the Sharks down 4-2. Live here in the second period, this final game of a three-game homestand. After this, the Sharks are gone for five. Braun is pass blocked by Hamuse. And Henrik Sedin now starts out with a three-on-two shorthanded. Slowed down in the neutral zone. Sharks get some bodies back and Stalock pushes it into the corner. Wingles with some speed through center. Gets a step on Tanev, but he lost the puck. And Garrison's out of the box and the power play is over. No shots on goal on the two-minute man advantage. Hannon, that one gets through. Luongo covers it and a whistle. Rafi, uh, speedy recovery. Looks like you're doing well. Any projected time when you might be back in the lineup? Well, if it was up to me, I'd like to, you know, I, I wish I could get in there tonight. But there's other people that are involved uh, yeah. in the process. So, uh, you know, and they're, the, uh, they're the ones that know best. And for me, like I said, I've just got to be ready, ready to go. And uh, whenever they uh, whenever they say, all right, it's time to start pushing it, then, uh, then I'll be ready. I know Sharks fans are looking forward to seeing you back out in the ice, and thanks for the visit. All right, thanks Rappi a lot. Torres joining us live here at SAP Center. The Sharks trailing the Canucks. 4-2 will be back. Thanks, bud. Here's your up-to-date Pacific Division standings. Anaheim on top. 13-3-1. They just came off that amazing road trip. 27 points. But look at how close everyone's bunched together. The Sharks tied with Phoenix. Two back are Vancouver. L.A. Another four back of the Canucks. Those teams might all end up in the postseason, but as you said earlier, the bottom ones there are going to end up being very low seeds. Now Alex Burrows. Sending it into the San Jose zone. Burrows with a two-point game going tonight. Both of them assist. Played by Demers up for James Shepard. Mike Brown, first goal as a Shark score back in the first period. Santarelli gets it back for the Canucks as they go wide to Burroughs again. Vancouver's got their hands for with the rest of their road trip. They've got to play LA and Anaheim as they go all Pacific. Harrison a blast and he missed the net. He's got the hardest shot on the Canuck roster and we saw it there. It was just off target. He can shoot it. He hasn't been able to Get it on target for a while. 15 straight games for Garrison without a goal. Last one he scored was against the Sharks in the power play, wasn't it? He did get one after that. Oh, okay. But he did score against the Sharks, you're right, in one of the 4-1 San Jose wins earlier in the year. The first one. Cannon. And that'll go all the way back into the zone for icing against the Sharks. All right, Rafi Torres said it'd be interesting now watch the San Jose Sharks down 4-2. A little over, or a little under, I should say, half the game left. Now what do you do? Who are you looking towards? Now really what you should be doing is looking towards your, each other. You should be looking within yourself and looking towards each other. Okay, the only way you get out of this is get back to the way you need to play, your identity, the details in your game. Start moving off the puck like you were early in the first period. I think you do something that you and I often do, and that's you look in the mirror. Right. Exactly. But we're doing it, you and I do it for different reasons. Different motivation. Staylock with one that floats in from the left point through a couple of screens. But you know, with the Vancouver Canucks, they're, as we talked about, a very different team than the San Jose Sharks saw the first week, first two weeks of the season. Brian Kessler up on the line with the Sedins. That's where they changed that line because of the fact that 
Mike Santorelli has played so well, but I asked John Tortorella, what one aspect of your game did you need to implement as soon as you could? As a coach, he said, playing below the hash marks, both defensively and offensively, and they do that very well now. That last, this pass blocked at the line by Stanton. And Nieto in against Bieksa. Bieksa. Hard pass out of the corner. Cassian can't get it out. Now Nieto takes a look. Has Demers open. And it's deflected just wide. Havlat back out that side, but no one there. And penalty coming up to Demers. Going to get a trip. And now. Sestino was trying to get at. Demers. Actually, it was Archibald. And they kept Archibald from Jason Demers, and it'll just be the two minute penalty to Demers. Coming out, the knee goes out. Knee on thigh. And that was a penalty number five, Neen. Yep. No doubt about that one. Fortunately for Archibald, did not get him on the knee. It got him on the thigh and got him in the padded area where the hockey pants is. And now the very good, even though the numbers aren't that great, but it's a very good power play. There's a lot of puck movement, a lot of player movement, and of course Daniel and Hendrick are the two key cogs on this power play. So Darren Archibald, who took the long circuitous route to the NHL via the East Coast League, then the American League, and then called up here with the Canuck injury situation from Utica. And now the Canucks on the power play for the first tonight time tonight. Unbelievably, 26th in the league on the power play. They'll get a lot of good looks here, though. Kessler. Far side off the skate of Pavelski to Daniel Sedin. Burroughs parked in front of Stalock. Hanus to Kessler. Kessler's shot off a deflection from Marlowe. Patrick can't get hold of it as Daniel recovers for the Vancouver Canucks. Burroughs. He's checked by Braun. Now Kessler on this side. Can use the one-timer save. Rebound and it just missed. Kessler able to keep it in. Reverse to Hamuse. Now on the wing, Daniel. Shot saved by Stalock and he hangs on. And there's the one good look on the one-timer. But stopped by Stalock. Big shot, one-timer, boom, there's the rebound opportunity. I think Alex got a piece of that. Let's have a look from our net cam. Does he get a little piece of it? Yes, he gets his pad out there, and it deflects the puck on the other side. Very good two saves by Alex Daylock, who's obviously into the game and ready to go. Henrik Sedin just waiting to pounce on that, trying to keep his streak alive that we talked about. 12 straight games with at least a point. But he doesn't have one yet. A clear. And there's a minute to go on the power play. Burroughs comes back to this one. And across it goes. Daniel Sedin back for Hamu. Here's Henrik. Daniel fires it into the crease. Saved by Stalock. They crash That's the net. Up. And it's off courtesy of Alex Burroughs. I think they're going to say that Brad Stewart assisted Alex Burroughs in knocking that net off. So the puck will stay inside the zone on the faceoff. This is something else. It just That's in, like, throw the puck at the net as hard as you can. Well, I don't know how they... they it's actually, Henrik Sedin knocked Burroughs yeah. into the post. Yeah, it's, it's that, that faceoff should definitely be outside. But that's another play. Just throw the puck at the feet, and it's a little deflection in front of that. Just as Alex Burroughs is standing there in between his legs, he just twists his stick. Tries to deflect it by Stalock, who has been busy and good. Braun trying to get that out, and Joe Thornton does. Both he and the defender back there, Edler, dropped their sticks. Here's a chance for the Jardin, a two-on-one with Thornton. The Jardin shoots, saved by Luongo. Garrison slides, and he likes to do that. Back come the Canucks, trying to get an odd man attack of their own here. Sandarelli plays it around. Stalock left the net to try and slow it down, but he missed it. Now Cassian. Broken up by Justin Braun. And Nieto will stuff it down the ice as the penalty expires. Jason Demers out of the box. Good penalty kill. 
A couple of shots or a couple of chances for the Vancouver Canucks, but for the most part, the Sharks kept the puck to the outside. Well, right now, the Sharks need anything to build on, and if it's right. a good penalty kill, they'll take it. Right, absolutely, and that's sometimes you build off that. Sometimes you get, okay, we got a little momentum on a big penalty kill. Vancouver goes up 5-2. Boy, it's a real, real long road back. The San Jose Sharks, thanks to their goalie and some good work, are still within striking distance. After two periods Tuesday against Buffalo, the Sharks had 27 shots through. They have 10 right now. Indication how good Vancouver is playing right now and how the Sharks have got to find a way to, to get back in the game. And get back in the game by what? Throwing the puck at the net, getting some chances, generating some chances. 16-4, the shots for Vancouver in this period. We'll be back. Vancouver ahead by two here in the second period. The Sharks didn't win here Tuesday against Buffalo, but the second star of the game, Tommy Wingles, had himself a pretty good night, Drew. Very good night. Tommy Wingles' development continues to evolve, continues to get better and better. He continues to become a tougher, smarter, stronger hockey player. Of course, he scored in overtime, but a goal that was denied the Sharks, and then they eventually went on to lose in the shootout. Wingles with the second assist on that Thornton goal tonight. Now has a five-game point streak going. Two goals and six points over the last five. Brad Stewart moving that puck out of his zone. Now Andrew Desjardin with a little speed comes across the line. Nice to get through the Vancouver defense. Kennedy puts a pop on Burroughs as Stewart slaps it back in. Mike Brown all the way across to this side, waiting on it is Kennedy. Can't get it by Bieksa, but Stewart holds it in. Now, again, tipped in front by Brown, and he's shoved down by Stanton. Welsh for the Canucks. The transition again by the Sharks as Kennedy sends it in again around and behind Bieksa. 3.15 to go in the second. One goal in this period. Vancouver's Zach Cassian. And Stalock will leave it for Dan Boyle. Boyle takes a hit, gets the puck up ice to Shepard, but he couldn't move it in. Mike Santorelli with good speed the other way to Higgins. And back to James Shepard. Shepard's pass into the skates of Higgins. Cannon up for Marlowe. Now Shepard comes into the Vancouver zone against Chris Tanev, drops it for Thornton. Joe back around for Shepard. It'll go all the way to Demers. Now Thornton. Marlowe across the goal mouth, and that was blocked by Santarelli. Not sure if Marlowe was trying to pass I that think or he shoot was. it. I think he was. I think he thought James Shepard was coming to the net. And you see there's been some line changes by Todd McClellan. Trying to spark something. Yep. You know, Todd mentioned after last game when he changed the lines a little bit that the coach can't be the catalyst all the time that's going to enable some changes or enable some energy into the into the TO, into the team. He said it's got to be it's got to come from the players. For too long, the Sharks have looked behind them to see, well, coach, what are we going to do? Todd McCollum wants his team to take control of those situations. Pavelski to Braun mishandles the pass, then the return to Pavelski behind him. Better off just, you know, trying to fire that at the net. But unfortunately, he won't look out. Vaughn lost his ass. Kessler picks up the puck, puts it in the goal mouth, and it pinballs back out to Wingle. He lobs a pass to the line, intended for Hurdle. Now Hamu's back, and he'll get it over to Kevin Bieksa. Under a minute and a half left here in the second. Havlock has to turn away as Hurdle was stranded deep in the zone. Bounce to Matt Nieto and his backhander up off the high glass. Stewart, now to Boyle, and the shot deflects out of play. Check out the game day Twitter on sjsharks.com Twitter hub. Live commentary by Sharks and visiting team media members, plus tweets by the Sharks players, coaches, and outstanding tweets by the broadcasters. Participate in the game day tweet off and see the Sharks what? fan tweets, maybe even your own. Visit the Twitter game day hub at sjsharks.com slash game day hub. Be sure to use hashtag sjsharks.
you see there's a tweet off? Oh, there's a tweet off. Wow. How tweet it is. Tweet on, tweet off. <laughs> Brad Stewart, Logan Couture, and Havlat can't settle that as Burroughs are dumping in from center. Brooks have been stuck on 10 shots on goal for a while. They have not been able to even get through the neutral zone cleanly. 26-10, the shots in favor of Vancouver. To try to break a nine-game losing streak. Brown a shot. And that's saved by Luongo. Edler coming in a little late there. I have to it just makes me laugh. They, as soon as you get close, it, it doesn't matter which team it is. I'm not saying it's just Vancouver. It's, it's every team in the National Hockey Every team in hockey, if you get near the goalie, it's, it's, it's just this huge issue. The goalie's got 40 pounds of equipment on him. If you took a baseball bat to his legs, he wouldn't feel it. And yet, we see, as you put a little snow on him, all of a sudden everybody just loses their marbles. Well, he's getting wet. It's a goofy, goofy, goofy thing. It's been, and for as long as hockey has been going, that's been the, the mindset. Face off win, puck to Brown. Comes out of the corner, Mike Brown. And Jardin lost it to Hamu. Demers on this side, leaned on by Henrik Sabin. Kessler can't initially get it by Kennedy, now it's to center. And that's the end of the second period. So the Sharks are kept off the scoreboard in the second period and held to only five shots on goal, but Alex Daylock comes in and looks sharp in the San Jose net. That's it for the second period. It's Vancouver four, the Sharks two. Coming up, we'll check in with Ahmed Farid at our Sportsnet Central Studios, and then Drew Remenda is back with Drew's Clues. Center in San Jose, a look at the camera inside the Vancouver Canucks net, that is Roberto Luongo prepping the crease. Getting ready for the start of this third period with the Canucks leading. Four to two, goals by Richardson, Santarelli, Higgins, and Cassian. Oddly, four Vancouver goals and not a Sedin on the score sheet so far. The Sharks have at least done the job against the Canucks top line, but it's been the groups after that that have done the damage. Let's go live to Brody Brazil with associate coach Larry Robinson. Coach, obviously you guys talk about changes at the intermission. Are they small or large in nature? Well, we got a little, and they're major tonight. Uh, our biggest problem is just we're we're getting out hustle and we haven't won any battles. If you if you don't win any battles, you're not going to get possession. You're not going to get any scoring chances. We've got one line that's got five shots and uh, the rest of the team's got six. So you're not, you know, we, we've won games because we're getting 40 and 50 shots. So we've got to get that up. What gets you on the shot clock a little bit more here in the final 20? I'm sorry, what was that? What gets you on the shot clock a little bit more here in the last period? Well, it's a small little, uh, small little word called work. If you don't work, you don't win. Coach, thank you. You're welcome. Randy and Drew. No, that was it blunt. It doesn't get any more honest yep. and pointed than that. That's why he is such a respected coach and individual. And you look at a guy like Patty Marlowe. Patty Marlowe should have four or five shots in this game. It's, and when he talks about, you know, one line's got five and the rest of the guys got, the entire team's got six, he's calling guys out when they're actually calling guys out. Here's Thornton to Patrick Marlowe. As we're underway here with the third period. Sucks. Trying to get back on track here. He lost three in a row. And Pong shot gets through to Luongo, but a glove save, and he holds it. Roberto Luongo. Still, we'll see if he gets any love in Vancouver. Second in wins all time at the Vancouver, er, in the NHL, I should say, since 01 02 with 337 wins. All time win leader in the Vancouver Canucks organization, passing Kirk McLean. Sharks were down by two goals on Tuesday going into the third period. Then they came alive. Two goals in a minute 10. They tied the game from Kennedy and Hurdle. Buffalo took the lead back. And then Wingles got that late goal to force overtime. And the Sharks will need a similar effort here in the third period tonight against Vancouver. 
Luongo the save off the boil shot. Now Hurdle. Ingles trying to help Hurdle out along the boards. There's Vancouver shrinking his own right here. It's the battle that you talked about, Vancouver comes out with it. They win it. Santarelli lobs it deep, and they'll call on Singh. And that is, again, the Vancouver Canucks shrinking the zone, like we talked about in Drew's post, and the battle. John Tortorella talked today a lot about the way the team is played below the hash marks, but not only offensively, but defensively as well. And he said he believes his team has got it as far as the mindset they need to have going into each and every game. How to play with and without the puck. Couture steers it to the far boards. It bounces free to Boyle. Now Hatlock into traffic, and that hit the leg of Hamus. Boyle back to Martin Hatlock. He'll center it. Stewart winds up, elects to pass through the goal mouth and back to this side, and a chip out by Higgins. Good chip there for the Sharks, creating some scoring chances. As Edler now with control for Vancouver. Now it's Edler. He loads up and his shot deflects wide. Touch beat Toronto recently as Stalock catches that. Edler had 10 shots in that game. Nice save by Alex Stalock. Alex has been solid. And this is the work. This is the work that he puts in. Practice after practice. Well, that's a good save. Boy, they're going to come across again. And then he's going to swallow it up. And we talked about it last game when he started in Ottawa. The work that Alex Daylock puts in with Wayne Thomas, assistant general manager and goaltender coach extraordinary. This is that's why he does it. That's why he's out early. That's why he stays out late in these moments that he's put on the spot. Desjardins. And now Demers ties up with Burrow. Edler will send it back behind the net. Garrison ahead to Cassian. Cassian, one of the four Vancouver goal scorers. Burrows. And that will come to Stalock. Both teams change on the fly here. We're early in period three. Final game of this three-game homestand for the Sharks. Someday we will be in Winnipeg, Manitoba. The Sharks against the Winnipeg Jets. 4.30 Sharks pregame live from Winnipeg on Sunday. A rare Saturday night off in the NHL schedule for the Sharks. Well, there's nothing like a Saturday night in Winnipeg. Or as at this time of the year, we like to refer to it as Winterpeg. It is Winterpeg now. James Shepard, his shot saved by Luongo. Tanner will push this up the ice. Too far for Henrik Sedin, now Burroughs. Gets to it ahead of Vlasic down in the shark zone. The bronze there to support. Long skate for Mark Edward Vlasic. Four of those games on the five-game road trip in Western Canada. Sharks will play in Winnipeg, Calgary, Vancouver, Edmonton, and then finish up in Chicago against the defending Stanley Cup champions. So this will be the final home game until November 21st. Chicago was uh, played the Winnipeg Jets last night. It looked very good. Yes, the Blackhawks did. <laughs> they do, no doubt. There's the games coming up on our schedule in November. The one back to back, and that'll be difficult. Vancouver, and then into Edmonton. The Oilers are struggling. They lost again tonight. They're on the road in Tampa. They got Taylor Hall back though, and he scored a goal tonight. Jeremy Welsh, number 13 for Vancouver. Up to center ice. Tom Sestito on it. Zach Dolpe. And Coyle will get it back for the Sharks. Kennedy, he's got Desjardins. That's blocked by Bieksa. Now Brown slides it back for Stewart. He'll tee it up to flex off a stick and wide. Oh. Boyle gets hacked by Sestito. Apparently coming up, Forge. You think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just... Tom, you just can't swing your stick like that, bud. And if Sestito's going, what, what did I do? Flash. <laughs> just... 
looked like that's just a major chop in the bail arm penalty box, deservedly so, as Tom says, Tito. And Tom may say, well, I got the puck, but you can't wind up and chop like that. It's just, just not allowed. That is the kind of slash they had in mind when they invented the penalty. <laughs> exactly. Doesn't hit the puck, he hits the skate of Dan Boyle. That's... Tom, I understand what you're saying. He didn't hurt him, but dude, you can't do that. That's like two minutes for Sestitoing. <laughs> wow, here's an opportunity for the Sharks to get back in this game. Pavelski, and it deflects to the front of the net. A backhand shot, a rebound try. Marlowe pulls it back out, tries to shove it back to the net, but it's blocked. And Richardson will skip it down the ice. Back comes the San Jose power play led by Marlowe. And he can't get through that line of defense. Pavelski, he'll delay, try and get it through to the goal. Blocked. And Higgins will clear. Roberto Luongo was knocked down. I think it was Joe Thornton. And he's having a quick discussion with the official. Boyle now on to Tomas Hurdle. Hatlap steers it down as Hurdle goes into the corner against Bieksa. Puck comes out, Hatlat taps it back for Demers. Now Hurdle behind the net. Reaches out and tries to center for Wingles. He'll flick it back to Braun. A slap shot wide. Moves back to Wingles. Tommy Wingles. Hurdle out of the corner. Almost stolen by Henrik Sedin. Braun sets, fires just wide. Looking for a tip from Hatlat. Looking for Hatlat going to the net. Quick re-entry by Demers. Sharks tag back on side, but the Cox are able to clear it. Demers with the give into the skates of Hatlat. It's back down into Alex Stalock's neighborhood. 15 seconds left on the power play. Stewart gets it in. Tanev for Vancouver against Couture. Now Thornton out to Stewart. Shot saved by Luongo. And the penalty's over. Sharks over three on the power play tonight. So get in on the four check. Three guys, Brad Stewart jumping in. Now I, I thought maybe Marlowe should have gone to that harder, but when you saw him, you had a look at Patrick Marlowe. Patrick was sliding up to the high slot looking for a deflection. He didn't want to go for the screen. He was trying to get to the high slot for a tip. So that's why he didn't jump right into the eyes of Luanga. One of the new look lines that Todd McClellan has going here in the third period. The Jardin of center flanked by Brown and Kennedy. Here's Kennedy. And escape past Garrison. Now Brown. And it's poked to this side. Stewart will jump in. Gets it back to the point. Desjardins down for Brown. He's checked there by Edler. Hendrick back for Daniel. Garrison leaned on by Kennedy. Good work effort by the Sharks on this shift. Just didn't get a good chance out of it. As that one comes back to Brown. End of the shift here. This group will be looking to get off as Hannon chips it around for Stewart. Under 13 and a half left in the third. The Canucks built up their lead in the first period. They initially went behind 1-0 on a fluky goal by Thornton. Here's Burroughs, and that's caught by Staylaw. 13-10 to go in the third. We'll be back. Time for tonight's Ford Right Choice. Looking at goaltenders in their first career start with a victory, with 40 or more shots faced in that game. Roberto Luongo had it happen to him when he was with the Islanders, the team that originally drafted him back in 99, a game at Boston. He faced 44 and got the W. And it happened to the man at the other end, Alex Stalock, earlier this season in Ottawa. And then it happened to Red O'Bara for Calgary this year again wow. as well. 44 shots he faced for his first win. A shot by the Canucks from the line. That was Stanton driving it wide. Now the shots come back the other way. Tommy Wingle. Pavelski jumps in. Now 
will go back over to Mark Edward Blasik. Al Pavelski steering it toward Braun. Back down the boards, knocked down by Kevin Bieksa. Wingles. And then Pavelski collides with Archibald. Wingles a shot, and that had a chance, but Luongo was able to get that right leg out on it. Vlasic a drive. That goes wide around the net. Starts with something going here on this ship. Broad has it blocked. Archibald handling it against Hurdle. Now behind the net, Hurdle. He takes a cross check from Hanyu. Or from Bayexa, rather. And off the linesman skate, and that helps out Richardson, who slides it back into the shark zone. 12 minutes left. 29-17. The shots in favor of Vancouver. These teams go one more time, as we said, next Thursday in British Columbia. Hard pass after Havlat to Couture, and Luongo, a great pad save. Juicy save. He got bumped into a little bit by Logan Couture. Tried to sell it a little bit. Back to Stewart. He'll fire it to the net. Luongo with a glove stop there. Going to say something to the referee about getting bumped into. Logan Couture just going to drive. Again, heavy stick. Nice deflection. Logan brushes by him. Roberto tries to sell one more time. Hard drive. Get your stick down. Get him the target. There's the deflection. One more time. Roberto Luongo. Nice save. There he is coming back into your living room. This is a nice pass, too. I mean, the timing of that pass is exceptional. I don't think Couture hits Luongo if he's not yeah. shot by Burroughs. Yeah, he gets a little shot by Burroughs. I mean, that's why, but that was the second time that Roberto's been pumped into. That's why he was having a longer discussion with the referee. Now Marlo to Shepard. Good time for the Sharks here if they can just get one by the long goal. That was Couture's first shot on goal of this game. Stewart now to Thornton. Up with Marlowe and Shepard. Joe from center, and Luongo will turn that aside. Thornton back for Marlowe behind the net. He's watched by Hamu. Now to Boyle. Up top. Demers is shot, saved by Luongo. Penalty to Dan Boyle. I don't know. Daniel City went down very easily there. Let's like see a replay. Henrik and uh, James Shepard pushing Shelvin. Kessler's going to come in and join just for fun. There will be a Vancouver power play. Dan Boyle is really upset with the call. Let's see here. 22 block. I love the fact that there's a monitor now in the, in the penalty box. It, the players can look, and it's fun to watch their reaction. <laughs> Shouldn't laugh at Dan's dismay, but it is fun to watch a reaction like that when the player just cannot believe that he got called for. It. Daniel Sedin draws a penalty. Well put. And now the Canuck power play on the ice for just the second time in this game. They have done it all, the Canucks, at even strength. All six goals in this game have been even strength. Kessler on the Canuck power play. Now Burroughs. Good job surrounding the puck by the Sharks. Logan Couture, not just thinking dump it down here. Thinking maybe if I can make a play, I'll try. Gets it to Pavelski in the corner. But now the Sharks have to back out. As Daniel Sedin plays it ahead to brother Henrik. Kessler to Burroughs. To Kessler from the top, a shot saved by Stalock. Now Kessler to the net, and it comes through to Pavelski, and he'll get it away. 30th shot on goal of the game for the Canucks. Sharks have killed half this power play.
Santorelli and Stalock gets the pads tight. Took a peek behind just in case, but a nice save. Nice job by the Sharks on the faceoff. Today, yeah, Vancouver puts four guys across the line. So what you can do, your defenseman left-handed shot can just pick up the puck if you win it. And you can clear it or just go ahead here. Now, this would have worked perfectly if the puck wouldn't have stuck on the boards. You still drop off and you've got the winger, this time Logan Couture, could have got the puck out if it would have been clean. But still, as four guys pop up on the line, the Sharks do a really nice job on this faceoff. Let's see here, the three guys is a right-handed shot and Braun, now he's got a battle. Santorelli down low for the Canucks with Higgins. Cassian out there as well. And they will pull this down. You notice in that play right there how Scott Hannon was looking. He was the play was along the board. Scott Hannon is looking, looking. The reason he was looking, he wanted to make sure that there was still protection or coverage out front. And that's what he's talking to Patrick Marlowe about. So he decided, yeah, I can go in there because Patrick Marlowe's in the front of the net. Thornton wins the draw. Thornton trying to loosen that puck up, and he's going to shake that off from Santorelli. There's some real grinded out hockey here along the boards. Finally out to Kessler. The extra rattler. Here's Garrison. He'll fire, and a save by Stalock. Oh! Alex Stalock has come in and certainly stopped the bleeding and then some. He's been very good. Throwing the puck around the boards. The Canucks pick it off. Stalock, what a save that is. What a quick glove by Alex Stalock on a big blast from Jason Garrison. Seven seconds left in the power play. What a save. Antti Niemi looks up and appreciates him of his, his peer, his goaltending peer. Penalty's over as Boyle's back out of the box. So the Sharks with a second successful penalty kill in this game. And they're still in the hunt here. Down 4-2. Over eight and a half left. Tanev. And that's taken back by Vlasic. Hurdle can't catch it. Archibald for Vancouver, comes right back to him off of Demers, who gets it up quickly. Wingles, angled to the boards by Hanyu. And the Exa will slide it up this side of the ice. Henrik Sedin, Wingles on the back Steve. check, trying to get it off him. Nice, Steve. That's how you back pressure. That's that four-letter word, work, yeah. that Larry Robinson talked about going into this play. Right. Going to be a San Jose penalty here to Brad Stewart. So the Canucks will go back on the power play when we come back. Two minutes for slashing. Dan Hamus, the stick knocked out of his hand by Brad Stewart. Referee calls that slashing. Brad Stewart objected. His appeal was denied. Yes, it was. It was Brad Stewart's intent not to slash, but he did. No, it was intent to slash. But his intent was not to knock the stick out of Dan Hamus' That's hands. what it was. So the intent was there. Therefore, he shouldn't have got a penalty. And we promise we will let that go. No, we won't. Eventually. I, yeah, eventually. I may never let that go. <laughs> you are that way. Yes, I am. <laughs> I, I don't ever want to be on your bad side. You are not a forgiver. You are a grudge holder. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Garrison sends it in for Vancouver on the power play for a second straight go around here after the Sharks killed off the boil penalty. Tough to mount a comeback when you're in the penalty box, but that's what the Sharks are faced with here. Still a little under seven and a half to go in the third. And Vancouver trying to end this long losing streak to the Sharks. A play at the net there by Daniel Sedin for Kessler. 50 to the pass, wasn't it? Now Henrik, he's got time coming out of the corner. Gets it back to the blue line. Garrison to the captain. Now Daniel, and that one goes off the skate. Sharks with the puck. Jardin's going to skate with him. Gets sandwiched in the corner by Garrison and Henrik Sedin. 
killed some valuable time from the Vancouver power play. Down to 40 seconds on the Brad Stewart minor penalty. Handler. Now BXA. Very well got a piece of that, but couldn't knock it down. From out of the corner, it's wristed clear by Braun. This crowd trying to get the shots popped up as best they can. They haven't had a whole lot to cheer about since back in the first period. There's a save by Stalock. Another. And then a little late, a put down to Justin Braun there. But that won't drop penalty. John Tortorella talked about the creativity and how the Sedins see the game. Check this out. Along the boards, boom. No look, knowing where Daniel's going to be. Hendrick knowing that his brother and winger are going to pop off the boards. That's seeing the game from that offensive, creative minds of the Daniel and Hendrick City. And the Twins signed four-year contract extensions just a few weeks ago. Burroughs just mishandled that Santarelli pass. Shepard unable to clear. We'll get a second opportunity, and he's unable to clear. Stewart. The Sharks are back to even strength. And down by two with 5.40 to go. Shepard got put into the boards rather aggressively by Edler. And Edler puts him down a second time. Play on, says the referee. Back to the Shepard's game tonight again. He's battling. You want to talk about work? That guy's doing it. There's a shot by Shepard and a screamer at that. Tomas Hurdle. And he tried to pick the corner but just missed. Demers leaves it on the boards for Hurdle. Able to slip it through to Thornton. Now Hurdle back on it. Tomas Hurdle behind the Vancouver net. Santorelli lost his stick but he leans on Hurdle. Cleared around by Thornton but Hannon didn't have the angle. And Staloff comes out to push it ahead for Martin Hadlock. Couture through the neutral zone, denied by Richardson. Yeah, Richardson's had a solid game for the Canucks tonight with his fifth goal of the year. Certainly used to that from Brad Richardson when he was playing in Southern California. Entry for the Sharks here. And Couture's pass goes off at skate back down to Boyle. I know you'd like to see Logan take yeah, that to the net. Certainly would. At this point in the game, you bet. Havlat for Boyle in front. Partially broken up by Tanev. Stewart will pinch. And Archibald gets it out of his glove, but Marlowe's there to take it back. Well, you're going to see the Sharks now take a lot of risk. The D are going to be jumping up, and the forwards are going to try to be maintaining the gap, even on their cover of the defense pinch. Fresh line comes on. Oh. Boyle looks for Mike Brown at center. Brown into the corner, and he will go after it against Daniel. Pavelski trying to move it along the boards. Kennedy, no stick, couldn't block it with his skate. Canucks come through the middle of the ice. And drawn back. Henrik trying to lift the stick and get it away, and he did. A wraparound try denied by Stalock, and Brown put down Kessler. Great read by Stalock. He saw that play develop, saw that there was a chance. Got the pad over. Stop Kessler Cole. And Hamu's angles back, and now we're getting into that range of time remaining where the Sharks need something to happen here in a hurry. Three minutes to go. And down by two, Todd McClellan is probably going to be forced to pull Staloc much earlier than he might normally. Santarelli in alone, and the pass for Higgins broken up by Marlowe. Burroughs. Walks it out from back of the net. Now Hamus off his glove. Marlowe trying to bring it into the zone. He does. But it's taken back by Higgins. And Hannon back on it now for the Sharks. Two and a half to go. Strong game by the Vancouver Canucks tonight. Held the Sharks to just 21 shots. One goal by Thornton that bounced in off Luongo. And 
and then Mike Brown's effort after that. Couture, and that's deflected. And out of the net is Staylock, and the Sharks are going for it now with just over two minutes left here. Kick to the boards. IBX up. Up at the blue line. Hannon going at it with Cassian. Play continues as Bieksa slaps it around. Not out. Havlat in front. Cleared away by Archibald. Now Havlat back to the point for Wingle. He'll wrist it through, but a clear look for Luongo, who covers. And then Bieksa shoves Couture out of the way. Wingles wants that Bieksa. Uh -huh. And Bieksa jumps on top of Wingles. And not quite fisticuffs, although Bieksa has his gloves off. Time for our Toyota game summary. 2-2. Two -two. And Higgins took advantage of a miscue by the Sharks' blue line and lifts it over Antti Niemi. And then this shot by Bieksa would go past Antti Niemi for a fourth Canuck goal, and that's the last shot that Niemi faced. Since then, it's been Alex Daylock shutting Vancouver out with 21 saves, but there's just been no goal support at the other end. Wingles and Bieksa chirping at each other in the penalty box. So this makes for a much more interesting fourth game between these teams in one week in Vancouver. Sure if the Canucks hang on here and win this and break this nine-game losing streak against the Sharks, It'll be a very spirited battle, no doubt, up in British Columbia next Thursday. And we want to remind you to stay tuned right here for East Sure and Sharks Post Game Live, which comes up next. Brody Brazil, Curtis Brown, and Jamie Baker will all offer their perspective on the goings on here tonight between the Sharks and the Canucks. So two each for roughing to Wingles and Bieksa. Sharks have their netminder out, so they'll still enjoy a one-man advantage. Discussion right now about why the face-off is outside. Referee saying, well, your defense came in on that skirmish. That's why the face-off is outside. The Sharks coaching staff vehemently, vehemently say no. And so the argument may be from Todd McClellan that our defenseman was already down in pinching. That's why, and, and trying to press the press the Sharks for an offensive chance. That's why he was down low, not on the altercation of the skirmish. Now, even though the draw comes out, Staylock is going to stay on the bench. And Thornton wins it. Now Boyle takes the shot, takes it up the boards, then he loses an edge. Thornton's there, so is Pavelski and Boyle. All around the puck now. Marlow in front! And Luongo the save as he fought it off. A little tight there for Patrick Marlow. Hard to make a play when you're that close to the goal. Cleared back for Couture, protecting his own blue line and the empty net. Logan Couture gets by one man. Swings it around for Thornton. Joe picks it up at the point. Down to Marlow in the corner. There's Couture. Back to Thornton. Couture. A hard pass from Joe Thornton. No stick now for him. He's sort of picking up. Thornton on the tip. It's Pavelski, but he didn't get enough angle on it to the net. Back to Thornton again. Couture's one-timer off the heel of the stick. Now Logan at the goal line. Has to buy some time. Gives it back for Marlowe. And Thornton can't reach this. It'll go all the way back. So the San Jose Sharks will... It's their fourth straight game, and the Canucks will finally break the San Jose jinx and end a nine-game Sharks winning streak against the Vancouver Canucks. Fun while it lasted. Thornton. Nowhere to go. Puck comes out to Vlasic. And the Sharks will now head out on the road for five games starting on Sunday in Winnipeg. And be sure to join us for that one here on Comcast Sportsnet California with our pregame Sunday at 4.30. And then the Sharks and Jets at 5. This one's over. The final score, Vancouver 4 and the Sharks 2. Don't go anywhere. Sharks postgame live is coming up next.